Honourable Member from Camrose. Madam Speaker, I am deeply sensible of the great honour that has been bestowed upon me and the constituency called Camrose, which I proudly represent by the Honourable Leader of the Government upon this occasion. First, I would like to congratulate you as our newly elected Deputy Speaker. Given your tenure in this House, I have confidence you will provide beneficial guidance and keen insight into the ways of our Assembly. Also, I would like to thank the Lieutenant Governor for her reading of the speech from the throne. It is my privilege to deliver my maiden speech at the first session, 30th Legislature. I am honoured that the constituents of Camrose granted me one of the greatest privileges and chose me to be their representative to bring issues and problems they face to the Legislature. I would like to thank my constituents for their support and giving me this honour to serve them. During my nomination period, and once the writ had been dropped, it was an opportunity for me to visit every town in the entire constituency, going door to door, introducing myself to the residents. I visited farmers and colonies. As I was intending to educate them about our party and why they should support me, as the case should be, I ended up learning more about them and what they required to be effectively supported. The needs are great in our area, and many have faced hardships in the loss of jobs and economic uncertainty. Many have worked in the oil industry, which has been extremely hard hit over the past several years. The residents are hopeful our government will have success in working with our federal government to get the pipelines built and help restore prosperity to our province. Madam Speaker, the Camros constituency is a newly formed boundary. Previously, our boundary included Wittasquin. However, Highway 21 between Camrose and Wetaskiwin now separates us. The boundary goes north following the Beaver County boundary line, north of Tofield and Viking, then runs down to Hardesty, Alliance and Bashaw. In 1909, Mr. Smith from these chambers mentioned the past year as one of plenty and abounding prosperity for agriculture. The total yield of grain within the province at that time was expected to exceed 34 million bushels. Today, farmers in our area are busy seeding and we have experienced some good weather over the past many days. There are some uncertainty as to what should be planted, as our agriculture industry is currently stumbling, given inflictions by our federal government. I wish our farming community well and pray for some rain over the next couple of weeks once our seeding season has completed. Madam Speaker, there have been so many kind people who have assisted me with my effort, giving me good advice, and are filled with pure wisdom. I would like to pay tribute to a few of those kind individuals by including them in my maiden speech. Darcy, one of our prominent farmers, had this to say. Agriculture is a key part of our province's economy. Oil and gas are our number one revenue source, but agriculture has been number two, and therefore a thriving agriculture sec sector is so important to the province and our rural communities. Camrose's constituency has a history of consistent grain, oil, seed, and pulse production. Tied with good access to transportation and infrastructure, it has led to numerous inland terminals, elevators, with more in construction. As well, the Cargill Crush Plant is an important part in value-added production in our region. We are exporting province and, nature, and nation. We produce more than we can use domestically, and so the ability to move our products to market is key. The struggles we've been We've seen in the last few years emphasize the importance of trade agreements and good relationships with those markets. As farmers, it's frustrating when you see exports diminish, not due to market reasons, but political ones. Pulses into India, wheat into Italy, barley into Saudi Arabia, and now canola into China. As farmers, we tend to be eternally optimistic, but we do need strong leadership locally, provincially and federally to work better those relationships, and importantly, push for trade agreements that remove some of the unpredictability. The beef sector has all also had similar access challenges. During my time traveling through the constituency, I had the pleasure of meeting many people who live at our 10 Hutterite colonies. These colonies include Wavy Lake, Donelda, Viking, Alliance, Rosalind, Lougheed, Camrose, Holden, Bruce, and Tofield. These good-hearted people contribute to our agriculture industry, but also furnish people with their garden vegetables and baking, which they sell at farmers' market. Many people are not aware of the large contribution our colonies make to the local food bank, helping to provide aid to those residents in our community who require an extra bit of temporary assistance. Their kindness and quality are appreciated, and I'm glad to acknowledge them in my maiden speech. Madam Speaker, 
In Mr. Smith's maiden speech, he talked about the mining industry with coal production for 1909 at over 2 million tonnes, mentioning a dispute between operators and their employees during the early part of the year, which had a negative effect on most of the large mines. Today, it is our past government that has had the negative effect on our mining industry. The town of Forestburg in particular has been hit hardest by this recent change in philosophy. Many in this area face losing their lucrative careers, which they depended upon to provide for themselves and their families. If they must relocate, the question is, who will buy their house? Will they be able to sell it at all? Greg, one of Forestburg's prominent business people, had this to contribute to my maiden speech. He says this, you would be hard pressed to find a better example of the pioneer spirit that the settlers from the Forestburg area that began an industry by digging gopher hole coal mines in the banks of battle a hundred years ago. The development of this valuable industry paved the way for coal-fired power generation that filled Alberta's energy needs for decades. These two industries set up Forestburg and area as a place a person could raise a family, gave a decent job and make a good living. That all ended when narrow-minded people decided to destroy what took generations to develop because they didn't want to work to improve what was already there. It seemed easier to them to just shut down the industry and displace the families. Forsberg and area still has the same spirit today that town founders had and worked tirelessly to reinvest itself. The government needs to look at rural Alberta as the unique area it is and apply rules that make sense for rural Alberta. The community is reeling and the pain is great. I will work hard alongside our ministers to ensure that the town is able to continue and thrive. We may not be able to undo what has already been set in motion, but rest assured, this government will do all that it can to preserve your way of life and ensure a future for you and your families. Madam Speaker, I've mentioned Mr. Smith in my maiden speech, and there have been many MLAs who have represented our area. I am blessed to be part of this legislature and proud to say that I am the first female MLA from the area. There have been many famous women who have acted in government. These halls have seen many great men and women who have preceded us. Among these people of note are Alexander Rutherford, Alberta's first premier. Additionally, are the famous five women who asked the bold question, does the word persons in section 24 of the BNA Act include women? Their efforts proved that women were indeed persons and did have the right to vote. When I look around, we have come a long way in this chamber since the question was first asked. My constituents can count on me to ask uncomfortable questions when they need to seek answers and to work diligently to improve our economy, ensuring a bright future for themselves and our next generation. I was born in Saskatchewan and moved to Alberta in 1989. During that time, the expression was, last one out, turn out the lights. I'm afraid that's what's happening in Alberta now. Many have left our province seeking job opportunities elsewhere. Our young people in particular are having difficulty seeking employment. This is the reason why I decided that I must run as a candidate. A great many people in our area share my concern. Given many of my family members still live in Saskatchewan, I would drive with my family taking the route through Camrose back and forth for many, many years. I knew when my children were young that once they had grown up and moved out on their own that I would one day live in Camrose. My son is an engineer and my daughter is a nurse. Now that they have left, I moved to Camrose where I have fallen deeply in love with the city and the residents who fill it. I count many friends who share all kinds of interests with me. I'm a proud member of the Camrose Chamber of Commerce, a Rotarian and an active member in my church. It is my humble pleasure to serve our community and its residents in a number of capacities. I asked one of our prominent Camrose businessmen, Phil, what he liked most about Camrose. Phil told me it was the friendly people, the pretty layout of the ravines, streams, mirror lake, the trumpeter swans, the community spirit, hockey, and well-respected long-standing mayors. Business is tough in our community right now, and we talked about how each month there seems to be a new business shutting their doors. Our constituency, along with the rest of rural Alberta, faces the challenge of population decline. There are many, many businesses for sale in our area and a lack of buyers. My hope is with our newly formed government that investors will feel encouraged and seek opportunity in our rural towns, which are filled with kind, encouraging people, anxious to meet uh, welcome investors. The people in my community are generous. They love to help others, and they like to spend time with one another. 
Gail, the president of the Swans and Roses Lions Club, contributed for me that we have 150 Camrose Lions members with two clubs. There, there are clubs in Balfe, Killam, Sedgwick, Lougheed, Viking, and Tofield. Gail shared the Lions Club motto is, we serve. We are in communities to provide service. We raise funds through volunteer efforts to donate local organizations and individuals in need. Several of our fundraisers include concession at Lindstrand Auctions, Christmas tree sales lot, July 1 pancake community breakfast. Recent beneficiaries of our funds include Neighbourhood Aid, which is the Camrose Food Bank, the Women's Shelter, Service Options for Seniors, Special Olympics, Meals on Wheels, and the Family Violence Action Society. We organize, we serve, and we work for a brighter future for our community members. Thank you to Gail for her contribution. Education is a pillar in my community. There has been an evolution, so to speak. Dean Allen Berger had this to contribute. The Augustana campus of the University of Alberta is located in Camrose. Part of the University of Alberta since 2004, Augustana now plays a unique role defined in for the public good, the U of A strategic plan, as a living laboratory for teaching and learning innovation to the benefits of the entire university. Augustana, which enrolls approximately 1,050 undergraduate students, including 6% Indigenous and 15% International, offers Bachelors of Arts, Bachelors of Science, Bachelors of Music, and Bachelors of Management degrees. It is a provincial and national leader in community service learning, international study opportunities for students, and undergraduate research. Inspired by the university strategic plan, Augustana has implemented a unique academic calendar and a first-year seminar program. Its faculty council recently approved new interdisciplinary concentrations in law, crime and justice studies, ethics and global studies, and creativity and culture, along with revisions to its core program that include a scaffolded approach to work integrated learning. As the only campus of the U of A outside of Edmonton, Augustana is also home to Alberta's Centre for Sustainable Rural Communities and the Chester Roning Centre for Study of Religious and Public Life. Through a relationship with Alberta Parks, the campus also maintains a research station at Mickalong Lake Provincial Park and will soon be adding an astronomical observatory there, taking advantage of the park's status as a dark sky preserve. Currently, both the U of A nursing and rehabilitation medicine faculties offer programs at Augustana recognizing that health science students trained in and among rural communities are more likely to build their careers in such settings. More broadly, Augustana and several health science faculties have aspirations to develop the campus as a center of excellence for rural health and wellness. Hardesty is another major town at the far end of our constituency, filled with kind, hardworking people. It is best known as a pivotal the pivotal petroleum industry hub where Western Canada select blended crude oil are produced and traded. My personal goal is to arrange a trip where our Minister of Transportation, Infrastructure, Energy and Red Tape Reduction could assist a committed group of business people successfully develop their community to provide jobs and have a positive impact on our community. Blake, one of the community organizers, advises the opportunity is waiting. I look forward to serving the needs of my constituency and all, all Albertans in this house. Thank you.